Here are five ways to make 3D text effects in Photoshop and Illustrator. Let's start by making a new layer in Photoshop. And this is Keegan North of the Indianapolis Alley Cats, so he'll be our example today. We're just gonna use the text North. And this font is Montserrat Black, so nice and bold. For the first 3D effect, let's go ahead and duplicate this layer. Command J is a shortcut. And then with your arrow keys, just hit the right arrow key once, and then the down arrow key once and then repeat that step. So let's duplicate it again, Command J, right down, and we're just moving this one pixel each time. And you're gonna have a bunch of these layers, something like this we can start with. And then with all of those layers you just duplicated, except the, the main layer that we started with, let's combine all of these by holding Shift, selecting all of them in your layers panel, and then Command E is the shortcut to merge all of them. So now we can take this merged layer, drop it below the initial text layer that we made, and then we can change the color of this merged layer by going down to our effects, color overlay, and you can see now the desired 3D effect. So again, this is very basic, but because we just inched it down one pixel every time, we have like a fully connected shadow type 3D effect going. And you could expand this out more if you wanted to just by again, Command J, doing the same process of right and down to make this a little bit blockier. And then again, can merge everything back together so we keep our layers panel nice and clean. And I should mention this composition, I have these finishing effects going over the top of everything. So that's why we're getting this gradient on our text. This is just a solid color, but finishing effects in this poster design just have some some different lighting effects. So we'll just be doing that to kind of blend in the text and, and give you an idea of how this 3D text can be utilized. The next effect we'll look at is just using shadows to create 3D effects. So let's turn off this bottom layer and just keep the top one. First, you can just go down to your effects, go to drop shadow, and as long as you're increasing this distance, this kind of gives the effect that the text is popping off the page. You can Play with the opacity, play with the color of the shadow too if you want to better match the, the design that you're working with. But the other way to create an interesting shadow is let's turn off this drop shadow layer, let's duplicate our north text, and with the bottom one, let's change this color to black or some dark color, and then we're gonna convert this for smart filters. Going up to filter, convert for smart filters, and then command T allows us to transform this bottom layer of text, and now we can just drop down, basically stretching it downward. And you might like this effect, you might wanna hold command, and you can drag these points to the right and left. So if we wanted some kind of effect where it seemed like the, the light was hitting it from this side and, and reflecting shadows down below it, you can do that and even add a Gaussian blur to this afterwards to kind of blend in the shadow some more. So again, just on our shadow layer, because we have it converted for a smart object, you can add this blur. You could also perspective warp this. So if we just undo, again, transforming down the initial text layer, but then going up to edit, transform perspective, you can drag these points outward too. So that kind of gives it a different feel. Again, just messing with where the lighting is coming from basically. And we can blur this as well. Different options you can do with creating shadows on your text. Next, we're gonna look at the classic bevel, which is done in Photoshop. Let's change our text color off of white. Let's use one of these purpley pink colors. And now let's go down to effects, bevel and emboss. And you can see already this gives it kind of this, this classic 3D Photoshop effect in that it's sort of a stroke that fades in and out, giving it a certain lighting feel. And you can change the angle of this lighting with this dial here. You can also mess with the size and depth. And if you wanted it really exaggerated or, or fully beveled, you can do that. But let's just stick with kind of a, an edge type thing going for now. And we can mess with the depth as well. So just like how much it can be seen and you can soften it a little bit. Sometimes it gets sort of pixely. So not a bad idea to soften it by a couple pixels. And I have it set to inner bevel right now. Technique is chisel hard, but you can mess with these as well. You can also play with the glass contour. So if you hit this drop down arrow, there are just some different preset options that depending on your design and your canvas, 
you might like some more than others. And we can take this 3D effect a step further if we wanna add a stroke. And we're going with an inside stroke, very small, two pixels, I think is plenty for this example. This canvas, by the way, is 1080 by 1350. It's kind of my standard vertical dimensions. We take a two pixel stroke. I have this gradient, just black to white selected. So you can change the, the type of stroke you want just by this drop down gradient, white to black, and then reflected is really cool at giving it this nice kind of lighting pop out effect where you know the middle parts have this white stroke on it and then the top and bottom are black. So it just gives it a little bit more of a metallic feel and making sure this angle is at 90 degrees so it's like a vertical lighting effect. We can also give this an inner shadow. You might wanna give it an inner glow too depending on what you're going for. This will kind of make it feel a little bit more popping out but the shadow kind of just creates this distance between the bevel and the rest of the text. So let's go with the shadow. I have it set to 100% opacity. You don't wanna go overboard with the size, but something subtle, and we can even bring the opacity down a little bit. But you can see it just creates a little bit of distance from the, the edge, the stroked part of the text and the text itself. The last thing I'd recommend doing is adding a gradient overlay. So I have this black to white gradient set to overlay for the blend mode and we can drop down this opacity so it's less harsh of an effect. Just creates a little bit more difference in the colors, like an actual 3D object would not be perfectly the same flat color throughout. This makes the top a little lighter, the bottom a little darker, but would encourage you to play with this as well. Like if we wanna match the lighting of this specific design, obviously we have the light coming from the top right in this case and so we can match the angle a little bit better. For the next 3D effect, we're gonna head into Illustrator and for this one, we're gonna do this extrusion effect, which just takes the, the 3D-ness to another level. So I'm gonna pick my same Montserrat black font and blow it up a good bit. We can type out north. And I think I wanna decrease the space between letters just a little bit, something like that looks good. And let's switch this color to, to a gray just so we can see what the effect is doing. This Illustrator canvas, by the way, I also have it set up for a 1080 pixel width. So it's the same width as what I have in the Photoshop document. And this is because we're gonna drag this in, copy and paste it in basically as pixels. So I wanna make sure that we're not losing any qualities. So make sure your Illustrator dimensions are similar or the same to the Photoshop canvas. Let's duplicate this North text. I'm just holding Shift, Option, and clicking and dragging down. And now with this top one, let's go up to Effect, 3D and Materials, and then Extrude and Bevel. So it's gonna default to this off-axis layout, but if you go down to your rotation presets, I'm just gonna bring all this back to zero degrees so it's not rotating it at all. And then if you increase this depth dial at the top, you can see we're starting to get some extrusion behind the text. And you can mess with the taper as well to see exactly how much of that you're seeing. You can also play with the perspective. So play with these dials and arrange the text in any way you see fit. We'll go with something like this. And now I'm gonna copy and paste this text into our Photoshop document and it'll ask you how you wanna paste it. I'm just gonna do pixels, and then we're gonna do the same thing with this text as well. So again, copy, paste, pixels. And we're doing this because we're gonna do different effects to the top part of the text, and then we're gonna keep this extruded part behind everything. And let's line them up just by selecting our top layer, holding Command, clicking on our extruded layer, and then just aligning it. And we can label our layers so we don't get confused. We'll call this one top, this one extruded. Let's go ahead and take the same bevel effects that we did on that last example. Let's just copy all of these effects over to our top layer and see what happens. You can see it's got the same bevel. It's obviously a different color because we started with a different color, but we can always mess with the color just by going to our effects and, and going to this gradient overlay. We don't have to do this black to white Gradient, we can go back to normal, bring it to 100% opacity, and then choose whatever colors we want for it. So maybe we wanna keep it in theme of this background. 
and we can reverse this just so we have the, the lighter purple on the side with the light, something like that. And then you can always combine these with some textures. So right now in the finishing effects, I have this grain texture going over the top of everything, but we can drag in something like this back of sign steel texture that I have. And then I'm gonna hold command, click on our top layer, and then mask this back of sign layer to the selection. And we can change this opacity and even set it to multiply or something to just blend it in a little bit more. But basically you're getting this different steel texture now. And we can do the same thing to the, the extruded layer if we wanted to. So just copying this down, deleting this mask, and then holding command and clicking on extruded and then clicking the mask icon for our back of sign. And depending on the lighting in your design, you could continue to work with this. Like if we wanted to select all of these 3D layers together and put them in a folder. Now we can add a curves layer on top of this. Go down to your adjustment layers, go up to curves, and we can clip this curves layer to our group of 3D text. Holding option, just hovering in the space between layers. We can click and drag like a midpoint of the curves to bring some brightness to it. And maybe this just makes sense as is, but if you want to like fine tune the brighter and darker parts of this 3D text, we can invert this mask. Command I is the shortcut. So we basically start with a black mask. Now with our brush tool and a white foreground color, we can brush in whatever parts we want highlighted. And if we wanted to, we could duplicate this curves layer, delete the mask, but reset it. And for this one, we can bring it down to darken. And again, invert this mask, brush back on the parts that you just want darker. And it just makes the text a little bit more dynamic. We can also add a drop shadow to the whole thing, like taking an effect from before, you can combine some of these. Probably don't want it distance so much, but just the idea of popping off the page a little bit more, something subtle like that. And you can always tweak these colors and the lighting, like obviously this N is looking super dark. We can go back in to the top, go to our gradient overlay, and this black is, is probably the issue. So we can change this to more of like a lighter purple. So we can get a little bit more of that color on this end. Last effect we'll look at today is going back into Illustrator. Let's create some new text. We'll again type out north. This time we're gonna use this inflate effect. So for this, I wanna use more of a rounded typeface. There's this font called Omnium, Omnium Medium we can use. Kinda has this cool swoopy rounded look to it. Now let's click our text. Again, we'll change the color to something like a, a light gray. It doesn't really matter because we'll change the colors in Photoshop. But if you go to effect, We'll go to 3D and materials and then inflate. This is just gonna like poof it out basically. And so you get this like these rounded edges. Again, you can play with the depth and if you wanted to, to mess with the rotation and the view of it, you can, but we're just gonna keep ours at zero, pretty standard and mess with the taper as well. If you wanted to see more of the, the 3D shape, I don't need to personally, we'll keep that at 100%. So let's copy and paste this into our Photoshop document. Command C to copy. Command V, we'll paste it as pixels again. So we'll position this again, just at the top of our canvas. And now we can go down to our adjustment layers and go to a gradient map. This is gonna allow us to mess with these colors. We'll clip this layer so it's only affecting our text. Again, holding option, hovering in the space between layers and clicking. Now we can just play with these different dials, like probably introduce some kind of lighter color. And you can see it almost has like a neon type feel to it in this example. I mean, obviously there's a lot of glowing going on in this design, but if we really wanted to embrace this neon type effect, we can also add some more effects to the text itself. Going down to effects and then outer glow is a good one. Some kind of pink color from the background and then we can up the size something around there. We can also add a drop shadow, but set this one to screen. And that's basically creating another outer glow. If we just reduce the distance, keep it right on the text, right behind it. You can mess with the size of it and the opacity, but it kind of gives it the subtle glow even beyond the outer glow that we initially put on. So that's all I have for you today. But as always, let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully those five 3D effects can inspire your next design.